Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna do another one of the mid-year book freakout tags. I also did one last year and if for some reason you are interested in my uh, answers to these questions back in 2017, I will leave a link to that video somewhere here up on the screen. I also want to like apologize for the weird lighting right here but the sun is shining like so bright right now so I put my curtains up. Let's start with question number one and the first question is the best book you've read until so far and I definitely have to say that that is the exact opposite of OK by Laura Steven. I don't have the physical copy here with me. That is also for a couple of the other books that I'm gonna mention in this video because they are in my dorm and I'm currently not in my dorm. I'm at home right now. The exact opposite of OK is one of the best books that I've ever read. Not only this year, but like ever. It's so good. Izzy hooks up with two guys in one evening and someone has taken photos of her hooking up with one of those guys and they have spread all the photos on the internet and then Izzy's life gets like shut down like there is so much like slut shaming towards her and not towards the guys because that is society's problem these days and that follows just like her whole life and how she's gonna solve together with her best friend who posted all of these pictures online and um it's a really important read about feminism slut shaming and everything that is like wrong and good with those two subjects. And it's also super funny, like I laughed out loud so many times and I never do that with books, so it's it's a really, really funny book. Like Laura Stevens' way of like writing and her narration of the story is so great. It will definitely keep your attention and the jokes also make it a little bit more of like a semi-light read. Like it really packs the punch, but it also makes you laugh a lot. <laughs> Question number two is the best sequel you've read until so far. And like I said in my last video, I am really bad with reading series. Like I start them and then I usually don't continue with them immediately, uh, but I'm trying to fix my problem. So the best sequel that I've read in 2018 until so far is Traitor to the Throne by Alwyn Hamilton. It's also the only sequel that I've read this year. It's, it's really bad, I know. This is the sequel to Rebel of the Sand, so I'm not gonna talk to you guys about what this one is about because because spoilers for the first book. I have talked about Rebel of the Sands millions of times, so I'm gonna skip that one for right now. But if you wanna look it up, it's my favorite trilogy ever. I'd say um, go check it out on Goodreads because it is an amazing YA fantasy series about the desert and magic and political intrigue, and it's just really good. <laughs> Three is a new release that you haven't read yet. And I'm, I'm really quite ashamed that I haven't read this one yet. It has been out for, I think, five months, but everyone talks about it. I still haven't read it. Yes, you guessed it. It is Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. It's just so pretty too. If you haven't heard what this one is about, I, I think you've been living under a rock. I'm just gonna read the four sentences to you guys. They killed my mother, they took our magic, they tried to bury us, now we rise. That sounds just so intriguing. I've heard absolutely only amazing things about this book and I need to read this this summer. It's also really big, so... That is why I think it would be perfect to read during summer because then I have a little more time. Number four is the most anticipated relief of the second half of the year. And to be honest, I don't really have like any book that I'm like really, really looking forward to. I'm only really hyped for books which are coming out in the first half of 2019, but we're not talking about that. For the last half of 2018, I think I'm gonna have to go with What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. I haven't read any books by Adam Silvera and I've only read one book by Becky Albertalli, but but this collaboration just seems perfect. Everyone is raving about it. I don't really know what the story is about. I only know it's about like a homosexual relationship and that's just, I, it intrigues me. <laughs> Question number five is my biggest disappointment and one of them is also my lowest rated book of this year and that is The Truth About Alice by Jennifer Matthew who is also the author of Moxie which I adored also this year but this one was totally not what I wanted from the story. The stereotypes in this book are so... Mm, I hate them so much and probably they're done on purpose because you follow five different characters who tell the story of um, a girl in their school who slept or allegedly slept with two guys in one night. It's not the same as the exact opposite of okay but it's completely different from that. It is just not a good book. I gave this one a two out of five stars but I also wasn't really expecting that much 
but I definitely wasn't expecting to hate this book as much as I did. Hate is a strong word, but disliked very much it is. I think we're at question number six, and that is the biggest surprise. One which I didn't really have any high hopes for was released by Patrick Ness. Again, it's in my dorm. This is like a coming of age type of story, but you also follow two different perspectives. One is from like just a guy living in a small town who's trying to um like come out of the closet. The other perspective was so incredibly weird. It was like this girl who came back to life who got killed by her boyfriend or something. I don't know. It was very mythical and I didn't really care for that perspective like at all. If Pedrick Ness didn't put that perspective in the story, I think I would have loved the book more, but I just didn't really get the like meaning behind that perspective. There probably is some deeper understanding to it, but for a simple 19 year old girl like me, it's, it's hard to understand. <laughs> Numero siete is my favorite new author, debut or new to you, and that is definitely Laura Steven. I believe she's a debut author, but just her humor was amazing and the characters and the story, so I, I think she's a new favorite of mine. Question number eight, my newest fictional crush, and that is definitely 100% Seth from Moxie by Jennifer Matthew. This guy was just absolutely amazing. Uh, Moxie is this, again, YA contemporary novel all about feminism, about Vivian who's just like fed up with all these awful guys and teachers in school and like nothing is being done against the sexist comments and she starts like some sort of like girl magazine or what she calls a zine with like feminist power movements in it and Seth is just an amazing guy. He is very like understandable and he tries to also be like a really great feminist which just brings across an amazing message that not just only girls or women can be feminists but also guys because feminism is all about females and uh, males being equal and it's not about man hate or anything like that. Seth, oh man, I wish that all guys were like you. If you're like Seth, just call me please. <laughs> Nine is your newest favorite character and that definitely has to go to Sam in Traitor to the Throne. He is like such a charming kind of douchebag. Like it's not really a douchebag, but he just, um, he's uh, very selfish in this book, but he actually really cares about people and he was so charming. He always tries to make so many jokes, but when it really has to be serious, he can be serious. Too. Question number 10 is a book that made you cry and that is a little bit Save the Date by Morgan Madsen. It's not a spoiler but I predicted something happening in the book from the very beginning. If you've read this book you probably know about which thing I'm talking. In the end it kind of a little bit made me cry but it didn't make me sob but I've definitely like spilled a little tear. 11, a book that made you happy and that is definitely Matilda by Roald Dahl. I bought this book in Dublin when I was there with my mom. I read it when I was younger in Dutch and I really wanted to read this book in English to see um, what my experience would be like right now and it just made me feel very nostalgic. I again love the story so much and it really is my mission to read like so many Roald Dahl books right now so I really want to buy this like 15 book box set of his that is on Amazon for like 30 to 40 euros which is very cheap for 15 books. Oh, I just want to read all of his books right now because it makes me feel like a little kid again. <laughs> Number 12 is your favorite book to movie adaptation and this was my first initial thought, Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda. I thought this book was it was fun, but not as fun as everyone else thought it was, but the movie was amazing. But I forgot a very important book, which is actually my favorite book to movie adaptation. That is definitely 100% Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. The film is like very much different from the book, like the big plot is the same, but there are like a lot of details which have been like altered to make it easier for non-book readers to understand the story, which was kind of a little bit of a shame, but oh man, how much I enjoyed this movie. I saw it with my dad, he also incredibly loved it. I just love all the 80s references. Ready Player One is about this world in the near future, like 2045, where everyone lives in this virtual reality called the Oasis. Like, you can play games there, you can live on certain planets, everyone also uses it to go to school, and the rest of the world is just, it's, it has gone to shit. One of the two creators of the Oasis dies, and he has put a couple of easter eggs in the game, and if the person who finds all of these easter eggs and figures all the puzzles out, they get all of the, how do you call that, money and the everything from the guy who has died because he doesn't have like a real family. It's so good. I loved it so much and I cannot recommend that book 
enough. It's amazing. Go read it if you love like science fiction video game stories. It's the best. 13 is your favorite video that you've done so far from this year and that is definitely the stories behind my books video. I will leave a link to it somewhere here on the screen where I talk about all the backstories about the books that I own which I thought was a really great idea. Some of you guys really liked it as well and I definitely want to do a part two. I have rearranged my shelves though so we shall see how I will fix that. I just thought that it was very interesting to see all the stories behind the books that I own because it can be coupled to like a memory or where I bought it or how I felt about it. Number 14, the most beautiful book that you've bought until so far. So I had to choose from all the books that I own right here and it's a tie between these three. Like I absolutely cannot choose which one so I will just quickly show them to you. The first one is The Wicked Deep by Shia Earnshaw because this foiling, if you keep it in good light, it is hologram. Holographic. You can probably see it a lot better when I do this. Yeah, it's so pretty and holographic. Plus, under the dust jacket, it is also just incredibly gorgeous. And the Surface Breaks by Louise O'Neill. This cover has so much detail on it, and it is like a story inspired by Ariel, and I love this one so much. Also, under the dust jacket, it looks like a mermaid, which just oh, makes me happy. And then lastly, I have Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This is a new, like, edition. It's an exclusive collector's edition as well. Uh, the end pages are really, really pretty. And beneath the dust jacket, you have this, which, again, I really love it when publishing companies do stuff like this. So it's um, these three. I cannot choose which one is the best. And then the last question, question number 15, what book or books do you need to read by the end of the year? Well, basically every book on my shelf, but the one that I think I need to read the most is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. The movie is coming out, I don't know when, very soon, probably in a couple of months. I haven't seen the trailer because I just want to read this book. I have read the first chapter, but at the time, I wasn't really feeling it, but I mean, come on, I need to read it. Everyone read this already last year and I'm just a little bit behind on the bandwagon. So yeah, those were all of my answers to the 2018 edition of the Mid Year Book Freakout tag. You guys can follow me on all of my different social media pages. Of course, I have Goodreads, Instagram, Snapchat, plus an email address, and links to those will also be in the description bar down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!